Hello students, welcome to the subject of advertisement and visual publicity. As part of this subject, today's lesson is about advertising research, ethics and code. Let's understand the meaning of advertising research. Advertising research is the survey conducted to ascertain how consumers respond to a particular ad, advertising campaign or to an advertisement in general. Advertising research is a specialized form of marketing research conducted to improve the efficiency of advertising. Advertising research is the systematic gathering and analysis of information to develop or evaluate advertising strategies of ads, commercials and media campaigns. Advertising research adds the dimension of a scientific approach, business approach and creative approach to advertising. While business approach is concerned with advertising as a part of the marketing mix, creative approach in advertising refers to the effectiveness of communication from seller to the target customers and the scientific approach is a practical way of ensuring against advertising failures to improve the probability. The role of research in advertising process is very important because it provides the customer with lots of information on their desired products. It is used to discover about the brand or product, to make out what is popular in advertisement, to find out successful marketing techniques, to learn about the history of brand or the product. These can be done by two ways, that is primary research and secondary research. Primary research is a collection of data that has to be gathered by oneself. The researcher has complete control over what specific things to be found out and how it is collected. However, there are few disadvantages of primary research. One of these disadvantages is that it is very time consuming to collect the data that is needed. Example, questionnaires and surveys. Secondary research. Secondary research is secondhand data that already exists from someone else research. It is useful to gather a lot of information quickly. Disadvantages of this include quality and reliability of that research. Example, books, online browsing and some other secondary resources. The types of advertising research are based on client needs which are either customized or syndicated. Customized means specific to client interests. Syndicated means research about multiple firms available for sale to clients. There are two types of advertising research. Pre-market research or pre-testing and post-testing or tracking studies. Pre-market research or pre-testing. Pre-testing is also called copy testing. These are done to optimize advertisements for media. It is done before advertising. It is based on consumer response, feedback and behavior. It is to find out the effectiveness of integrated campaign such as print media, TV and internet. The methods to undertake pre-market research are consumer jury is taken as the first. This is the oldest and simplest test. Personal or group interview may be used. One may be asked to vote on an alternative based on their preferences, interests or influence to buy the product. Another procedure is providing a rating given by a group of consumers who may be potential buyers of product with an assumption that the respondent must like at least one advertisement. Rating scales. This method requires establishment of standards for effective copy and numerical weights for various standards. 
Ads are then rated in accordance with scale values and numerical score is obtained. The advantage is it provides a list against which to check an ad and help to single out the elements that are good or bad. Different judges give different ratings, which is the disadvantage of this method. Next method is portfolio tests. Sometimes the advertisement is placed in dummy copies of newspapers or magazines. A group of advertisements, usually a mixture of test ads and control ads, are placed in a portfolio. Next is psychological tests. A list of reactions like self pity, security, fear, or nostalgia is set up in alternative ads and then rated on how readers respond to those reactions. A number of techniques including word association, sentence completion, depth interviews and storytelling are adopted. This method is difficult to implement since skilled interviews are required. Next is physiological tests. Tests are obtained using special laboratory equipment which records individuals psychological response to the ads. Example, galvanic skin response, eye movement test, pupillometer. Sales tests. Sales tests are useful measures of advertising effectiveness when advertising is the dominant element of the only variable in company's marketing plan. Sales response may not be immediate and sales tests, particularly field studies, are often costly and time consuming. Day after recall tests. Research method that tests consumers memories the day after they have seen an ad to assess the ad's effectiveness. Post testing or tracking studies. Post testing provides periodic or continuous information on brand's performance including brand preference product usage and attitudes. Some post testing approaches simply track changes over time, while others use various methods to quantify the specific changes produced by advertising either campaign as a whole or by the different media utilized. Overall advertisers use post testing to plan future advertising campaigns so the approaches that provide the most detailed information on the accomplishment of the campaign are most valued. Continuous tracking is longitudinal study to monitor brand awareness, preference and product usage changes with advertisement spending. Tracking changes over time quantify sales volume changes. Tracking studies are the means to plan future campaigns. Advertising codes lay down rules for advertisers, agencies and media owners to follow. They include general rules that state advertising must be responsible, must not mislead or offend and specific rules that cover advertising to children and ads for specific sectors like alcohol, gambling, motoring, health and financial products. Let us see the general rules of conduct in advertising. Advertising shall be so designed as to conform to the laws of the country and should not offend against morality, decency and religious susceptibilities of the people. No advertisement shall be permitted which derides any race, caste, color, creed and nationality. No ad is allowed if it is against any of the directive principles or any other provision of the constitution of India. It is not allowed if it tends to incite people to crime, cause, disorder or violence or breach of law or glorifies violence or obscenity in any way. No ad is allowed if it presents criminality as desirable. It is not allowed if it is adversely affects friendly relations with foreign states. 
it is not allowed if it exploits the national emblem or any part of the constitution or the person or personality of a national leader or state dignitary. No ad is allowed if it relates to or promotes cigarettes and tobacco products, liquors, wines and any other intoxicants. No advertisement message shall in any way be presented as news. Advertisement must not be directed towards any religious or political end or have any relation to any industrial dispute. Advertisements for services concerned with certain factors shall not be accepted such as money lenders, saving schemes and lotteries other than those conducted by central and state government organizations, nationalized or recognized banks and public sector undertakings, unlicensed employment services, fortune tellers or soothsayers and those with claims of hypnotism foreign goods and foreign banks, betting tips and guidebooks etc. relating to horse racing or the other games of chance. The item advertised shall not suffer from any defect or deficiency as mentioned in Consumer Protection Act 1986. No advertisement shall contain references which are likely to lead the public to infer that the product advertised has some special or miraculous or supernatural property or quality which is difficult of being proved example cure for baldness skin whitener etc no advertisement shall contain the words guarantee or guaranteed etc unless the full terms of the guarantee are available for inspection by the directorate general of all india radio or tv and are clearly set out in the advertisement and are made available to the purchaser in the writing at the point of sale or with the goods. Advertisers or the agents must be prepared to produce evidence to substantiate any claims or illustrations. In case of goods covered by mandatory quality control orders, the advertiser shall produce quality certificate from the institutions recognized by the government for this purpose. Advertisements shall not contain disparaging of derogatory references to another product or service. Testimonials must be genuine and used in a manner not to mislead the listeners. Advertisers or advertising agencies must be prepared to produce evidence in support of their claims. Information to consumers on matters of weight, quality or prices of products where given shall be accurate. Advertisements indicating price comparisons or reductions must comply with relevant laws. Any such effects which might startle the listening public must not be incorporated in advertisements. For example, the use of certain Sound effects will not be permitted such as rapid gunfire or rifle shots, sirens, bombardments, screams, raucous laughter and the like. Advertising shall be truthful, avoid distorting facts and misleading the public by means of false statements as to the character of the merchandise that is its utility, material, ingredients, origin, etc. The price of the merchandise, its value, its suitability or terms of purchase. The services accompanying purchase including delivery, exchange, return, repair, upkeep, etc. Personal recommendations of the article or service, the quality or the value of competing goods, or trustworthiness of statement made by others. Testimonials of any kind from experts other than government recognized standardization agencies shall not be permitted. Methods of advertising designated to create confusion in the mind of the consumer as between goods by one maker and another maker are unfair and shall not be used. Indecent, vulgar, 
suggestive, repulsive or offensive themes or treatment shall be avoided in all advertisements. All those engaged in advertising are strongly recommended to familiarize themselves with the legislation affecting advertising in the country. Particularly, certain acts and rules are framed under these. First is the Drugs and Magic Remedies or Objectionable Advertisements Act 1954. This act prohibits advertisements for products and services claiming to cure certain medical conditions. As per the law, no advertisement should promise magical cure for any ailments or disease and the rules specify the diseases and ailments that cannot be advertised promising cure or remedies. The act does not cover advertisements that appear in various media pertaining to health gadgets of unproven efficacy like tummy trimmers, bands for blood pressure control and gadgets to increase height. This act does not provide for issuing corrective advertisements. Second is the Monopolies and Restrictive Trade Practice Act 1969. It had been the most effective ad in 80s and 90s to regulate undesirable advertising. In the year 1984, the government brought through an amendment unfair trade practices under the purview of the MRTP Commission and the Office of the Director General that is investigation and registration. The MRTP Act has been very effective in hauling a number of advertisers to stop advertisements which are prejudicial to consumer interest through its cease and desist orders. Third act is the Consumer Protection Act 1986. This act applies to advertisements for all products in the marketplace. A consumer may file a complaint related to false and misleading advertisements which are included under the definition of unfair trade practice. Section 2R is the law that mentions seven classes of unfair trade practices in six subsections of this section of the law. The next act is Cable Television Networks Regulation Act 1995. This law lays down the procedure for registration of a cable television network and also regulates the programs and advertisements transmitted on cable network in India. The next act is Drugs and Cosmetics Act 1940. This law regulates the production, manufacture and sale of all drugs and cosmetics in the country. The act prescribes a fine for any person using any report or extract of report of a test or analysis made by the central drugs laboratory or a government analyst for advertising of a drug or cosmetic. Next act is section 292 and section 293 of the Indian Penal Code 1860. This prohibits the dissemination of any obscene matter. The Indian Post Office Act 1898 imposes a similar prohibition on the transmission of obscene matter through the post. The next act is the Children's Act 1960. This act prohibits the disclosure of names and address and other particulars of any child involved in any proceedings. The next is the Indecent Representation of Women Prohibition Act 1986. This act forbids the depiction of women in an indecent or derogatory manner in the mass media. No person shall publish or cause to be published or arrange or take part in the publication or exhibition of any advertisement which contains indecent representation of women in any form. The next is the Emblems and Names Prevention of Improper Use Act 1950. This act prohibits the use by any private party of certain names, emblems, etc. 
The next is Motor Vehicles Act 1988. This law affects outdoor advertisements like billboards, posters, neon signs, etc. The Act grants powers to remove such advertisements which may distract drivers and have the potential of causing road accidents. These are all the various ethics and codes for advertising. Any questions in these? Ma'am, I have a question. Are the ad makers really following all the acts? Yes, to the maximum extent they are following and they have to follow. Otherwise, they will be penalized. At times, courts also involve and take up sumoto cases. There are many examples where the hoardings and billboards have been removed for causing inconvenience to the drivers on the road. Liquor ads have been banned and so many other examples we have. Any more questions? Okay, this is all about the various ethics and codes of advertising. Thank you.